Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to a Reason Reads on Wednesdays. It's madness all around in December. Uh, for those of you who are new, normally I do Reason Reads on Sundays where I look back the reading week or the previous two weeks. Um, but I have other videos planned. Uh, I did a Tops and Flops last Sunday and next Sunday. There's also something that I have to do. Um, and I thought I'm accumulating books that have finished. I have to talk about them. So hence recent reads on Wednesdays, but it's an exception. We will go back to the recent reads on Sundays at some point when all the December madness is kind of over. I don't even know. Oh yeah, the 10th uh, of the next Sunday is uh, International Human Rights Days and I want day and I wanted to do something special for that date. Anyway, it's just a recent reads. Relax. I'm talking to myself. Relax. So first, the books that I finished um, in the order that I wrote them down, not necessarily in the order that I finished them. Yes, the first was a nonfiction book, which I could have included in last um, Sunday's video about the tops and flops as the best nonfiction, but I had just about finished it. So anyway. Maybe it will make the Tops and Flops 2023. You never know. What book are you talking about, you will ask? Well, this one, Viral Justice by Ruha Benjamin, uh, published earlier this year. And this was a buddy read uh, with Chris, the, Chris from the book, Cugus. I will leave a link to her personal Goodreads website down below and also a link to the book, Cugus. If you don't know them, the podcast of two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read, it's really fantastic. They help me discover so many books and they have this really positive um, but quiet energy. So it's not as, you know, like me, <laughs> jumping around. So that's good for me to watch. Anyway, so we read this book together um, and I, I talked about it, I think, already quite a bit. Uh, Ruha Benjamin is a professor of American African American Studies in Princeton. She started out a, a different career. Uh, she was interested in science, mathematics, so that also what her PhD is about. But then she uh, kind of pivoted towards African American studies. And this book is about the effects of racism and what we as individuals could do in order to make it better. And she calls her strategy viral justice. Um, and what she means by that is like a virus, small things can change, can make big changes. She's not saying uh, all the big structural changes we shouldn't pursue. She's not saying that at all, but she's telling me as an individual, you can also make changes in your environment, in your social context. Um, I like books that also give you something to do or change, but the biggest part of her book is a look at racism from various angles. And I felt that her angles gave um, a new perspective, at least for me, a new perspective. So she's talking, for instance, about weathering and the impacts of racism on the body and on health. Now that in and of itself is not new. We know that racism is bad for you and for your health. But the way she looks at it and the research she did and the way um, what she, how she combines various aspects, I thought was really, really uh, innovative and for me, um, illumination, an illumination. She, it's an intelligent book. She also combines her own history um, and her family's history, friends, um, and that is often, I feel, also not necessarily successful if you try to combine the bigger picture with your personal history, but she really succeeds in doing that. So if you are, I'm still having bad hair day, uh, like the last time, never mind, I need to go to the hairdresser really badly. Um, but if you are, you know, 
if you liked reading books like Cast by uh, Wilkerson, or is that her name? I think it is her name. Um, yes, Isabel Wilkerson. Isabel Wilkerson. Now you could could see the whole thing. <laughs> Not good at a thing. Um, this is certainly a book that will really interest you. Yeah, I, I thought it was an excellent, excellent read. Um, the next book I finished was also excellent, um, and that was Now in November by Josephine Wilson Johnson. This book was first published in 1934, uh, won the Pulitzer a year later when the author was only in her mid-twenties. So she wrote it, it's a debut novel, she wrote it when she was just 24. The book is set uh, during the Dust Bowl area, so area era so in um the, the big drought but it's also the 10 years that come before and we follow a family who um moved to a farm 10 years prior um because uh, after the crash 1929 uh, it was not 10 years prior but some years prior the 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 economy uh, the economy was bad and the father lost his job and so the farm was already owned by the family even though heavily mortgaged um uh, they have three daughters uh, and the middle one uh, i think sh that's what we should think is the portrait um is is telling us the story uh, she is just a, a teenage beginning of teenager when the book the the story starts um and then you know, she is beginning 20s. Uh, I, I don't think I got the timeline quite right. Forget about that. And let's talk about this cover. I mean, you, the, 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 depending on your taste, you might think it's beautiful, but it's not a cover suitable for this book. It looks like, you know, the story of a woman and gardens and something. This is a really heartbreaking, heart-wrenching story. Uh, and I'm not saying that if a story is heart-wrenching, it can't have a beautiful cover, but this is not a reflection of the book at all. Never mind. The story is told with such quiet, um, lyrical, but not uh, in-your-face lyrical language, and the heart break of the heavy life that already was heavy before the big drought um and this constant struggle and still the middle daughter especially has a very um also loving relationship with the land so it's also beautiful but heartbreaking um yeah, and I came across this book. I don't know whether I said that already, but I said it in a previous vid video um, because Kim from Middle of the Book March raved about it, and rightfully so. It's just really, it's an excellent read. Um, the next one was also uh, a buddy read with Heidi from My Reading Life, uh, and we finished it beginning of the week, and that I don't have a copy because I read it on script. Um, the murder bot. It's the, let me just check because I always get the series uh, mixed up. So this is the sixth book in the series published in 2021. Um, and it follows the event after book four, Exit Strategy. Uh, book five is uh, called Network Effect. And that is the only one in the series that is novel length. All these books, the Murderbot Diaries, are novella length, so 150, 160 pages. Uh, and I didn't haven't read yet a Network Effect because even though it was published uh, prior to this one, um, the story takes place after this. I'm probably completely confusing you now, <laughs> but anyway. So this is the sixth book in the series, but. It takes place uh, before the fifth. Um, and Murderbot uh, is now on preservation and uh, is there not as a sec unit, but is trying. If you read the books, you will know uh, there is uh, this, this very sinister corporation conglomerate, um, uh, Grey Chris, and they, Murderbot and the human, Murderbot is an. Uh, I a 
in the form of a human robot, by the way, um, undistinguishable, uh, di distinguishable from humans, just if you haven't read the murder one. Uh, and then a murder occurs. Some guy is found dead and murder bot uh, helps the security uh, people from uh, this planet preservation in solving the murder. If you know Murderbot, if you read Murderbot, I don't need to explain the sarcasm and the, the, the humor in these books and how Murderbot as a not human is looking at humans, but is also struggling with their own guilt from the past. Um, and it's just all that and a really, really good mystery. Um, this time it's more focus on the mystery, uh, probably because uh, the trick that Martha Wells thought of is in this particular book, um, our SEC unit um, has doesn't have access to all the surveillance and tech stuff. So they really have to go do the, you know, the grind work of a regular human detective almost. So yeah, it's fun. It's entertaining. It also raises questions about our assumptions of people and how we look at people um, without knowing them, but knowing they are, you know, a sec unit. And then we assume certain things about them. So it, it's always also deeper. It goes deeper than just the fun of this character uh, but it it you don't need to go deeper if you don't want to if you just want to enjoy a story that's also fine so i i had a really good time <laughs> reading this together with heidi and those are the three books that i finished i'm still the books that i'm currently reading i'm still slowly making my way through the merry beard emperor of rome um i'm about 100 50 pages in or something and so far it's really good i mean mary beard can talk about um ancient times in a very engaging and at the same time informative way there is a good mixture of anecdotes and information and i just really like her writing the way she brings the ancients um close I think is is just really fa is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And the book I'm about to start um, is a translated work, and I of course forgot the translator. Uh, yes, so it's this one. I will hold it up first, and then I will have a look. Amy Yagi, Diary of a Void translated from the Japanese by David Boyd and Lucy North. Uh, the original was published in 2020, and this one was published in 2022. Um, this was a spontaneous buy in a bookstore. I saw it, and I looked at the, the cover and the, um, the blurb, and I had never read anything by this author. She's a, a young, um, uh, Amy Yagi is an she was born in 1988, so for me, this is young. She lives in Tokyo. Um, and it's about a woman pretending to be pregnant. So it looks at the pressure on younger women uh, to become mothers. That That's the premise. That's all I know. Um, and it sounded interesting, also because I'm the book I'm working uh, on at the moment, a nonfiction book. Also, one of the things that I look at is motherhood in literature, in contemporary literature. So this book just ticked a lot of boxes, as they said. So I will probably start this today or in, in yeah, this week. Um, and I think that's it. Yes, that's it. There are a couple of buddy reads coming up. Um, um, and I have to stop before my hair completely <laughs> falls off my head or something. <laughs> this is a short video, 15 minutes. Yes, count your blessings. Anyway, so this was my recent reads on a Wednesday, the books I finished and the books that I'm currently reading. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, 
please leave a comment if you're so inclined and I will talk to you all soon in the next one.